Howdy everyone. Today I'm going to be sharing with you some clips of a 1989 Ford Econoline E350 camper RV van that I bought off a neighbor who lived down the road with just about 50,000 miles on it. It was in pretty good shape overall. The exterior looked great. The interior did have a couple little things to fix up that needed some TLC. There were a couple nests of wasps that as you'll see in the video, that were inhabiting the RV when I bought it. Had to clear those out, along with just natural things like the carpet. After 30 years, a couple window seals were starting to weather and allow water in. Those just needed some simple fixes, along with areas like the front passenger and doghouse. Some of the lights around the exterior were also rusting and needing to be replaced since they weren't working along with just seals and electrical work that had to be updated. I always love hearing thoughts on what people think I could have done differently. If you want to drop a comment at the end of the video, if you wouldn't mind subscribing or leaving a like, always helps out as well. Hope you guys enjoy. So now that you all have a better sense of the state of the RV, next we'll look at some clips of dissecting the problem areas and working to repair them as best I can on a good budget. So overall the camper isn't too bad. It's a pretty nice white beige-ish color with some stripes down the side. It did come with a couple areas that were problematic though. The first one in these pictures is a leak that was towards the front camper cab. Those are pretty common actually in these campers where it will have a little bit of leak that actually came through the window. The leak however was nothing compared to discovering all these wasps and their larvae when I was inside with the door closed and almost ruptured it all and got them all over me. Whew, that could have been disastrous. Next up I ended up taking off a lot of the hardware for the cabinets and the doors so that I could give them a sand down and match them with what the rest of the van would eventually look like which is going to be a white coat after some primer. Uh, the cabinets actually took a good amount of time, didn't end up reusing all of them as I ended up replacing a lot of them with newer, more modern white cabinets, in addition to just taking out some of the furniture and carpet that you're seeing right now to bring the whole thing up to date and make it just look a little more modern. And after spending too much time on all the cabinets, many of which I ended up sanding and painting but not completely reusing, Ended up removing the driver's seats so that I could get better access at the carpet and eventually put in a new layer of carpet underneath the drivers which would be the only replacement since the rest of the RV ended up getting a really nice dark brown hickory type of hardwood floor that is of course a laminate which is water resistant. I think that's pretty important for any RV since you're going to end up making a mess in most cases and maybe tracking on water or spilling it here and there like you would in the house. But ultimately the carpet came up really fast. I dug out a lot of the wood siding that you're seeing for the dry rotted areas that had leaked in through that little window. The front overhead cab windows are notorious for having these little leaks that do cause dry rot and can sometimes ruin the overhead cab. I was able to get it all patched up, fixed the seals, took it to a special RV place and they actually did a really good job resealing a lot of the windows so that they wouldn't have those leaks and once I patched up the wood it would be in much better shape. was very clear and careful to make sure it was structurally sound since I was going to be sleeping up there with potentially other people and people who I would invite into the van since it can technically sleep about four people comfortably, six people if you're really pushing it since there are a couple areas to sleep and the couch can pretty easily fit three when it's all folded out. But ultimately that was a lot of what the van needed, just some cleaning up, a little TLC. You're seeing me prep the floor after getting a lot of the nails and staples out, getting it ready for the insulation that would eventually go down. And then on top of that, of course, would be the laminate hickory type of flooring. The flooring actually went in really well. The cutting and designing of it was not too hard with the angles. And I think after it went in, it made the whole van look very good, completely new van, coupled with the couch that would eventually get its cushions replaced and reupholstered. Uh, the interior with a white coat of paint really came out looking nice and I think that's ultimately what turned it all around since the van was in good shape. It didn't need a whole lot of engine or mechanical work so I was lucky in that regard. One thing with the van that I could never actually get working, unfortunately, was the built-in generator, which I took to a couple different RV dealers and 
people who specialize in repairing generators, but unfortunately the cost to repair would have exceeded just buying a new one or figuring out a replacement that could just be connected and maybe left outside the RV when camping or doing things like that. So ultimately everything in the RV did get fixed up and left in better shape than it was found except for the generator, which I was sad to take an L on, but maybe someone else will be able to figure out how to revive it and get it working since I'm sure there's nothing really wrong with it. And I know a lot of people probably want to understand what I bought it for and maybe what I ended up selling it for. So the numbers broke down like this. As I mentioned, I was lucky enough to get this van from a neighbor right down the road who had been trying to sell it for quite a while. Uh, I imagine it had been sitting for maybe a year or two and I'm sure he was using it occasionally, but not much as they were planning on updating. But anyway, they ended up selling me the van for just about $4,000 and I uh, didn't have to pay anything on top of that in terms of mechanical work or really other than an oil change, which was a nice addition. The guy who I bought it from was a mechanic, so he assured me and was actually willing to help out with anything that may have come up as an unforeseen issue. That was obviously a very nice thing for him to offer. and. Fortunately for him, the van was in such good shape that I never had to take him up on that request. And after spending, I think it totaled to about 1000 to maybe $1,500 at most, I know that I didn't spend over 2000 and the biggest part of the cost was really just the reupholstering, I would say, of the couch cushions, fixing the seals and the dry rot, in addition to putting all the wood flooring down that probably accounted for the bulk of the budget on this rebuild and remodel project. So at the end of the day, I did end up selling it, as mentioned, to someone who drove from North Carolina to buy it. They surprisingly wanted to pretty much buy it sight unseen, but of course we did some test drives and showed them all around the RV to make sure that they were comfortable and happy with the purchase that they were making. I think it actually turned out really well with the dry rot areas fixed, the wood flooring that went in, replacing that old ugly carpet the couch cushion that got replaced which truthfully did have some stains updated cabinets that look a lot better than some of the old stuff that was there a lot more space in the cab which personally i was a big fan of because it felt a little crammed with all the appliances and the other cabinets when it was first there the white coat of paint really brought in a lot of light the windows helped open things up since i changed out the blinds too got some very nice cellular cordless dark black and blackout type of shades that I personally like just because I would attach a magnet at the bottom so that they would stay fastened whenever the van was moving. They did have a tendency to come unlatched if they didn't have that magnet, but not having the string that would bob around was a big help. And to me, it just felt like a overall cleaner interior experience while still getting the blackout and lack of light, which a lot of people like. I was tempted to almost put in some automated shades, but decided against it since they were really pricey and would probably be a little difficult to manage in a van that's constantly moving around and shifting to some extent. So when it was all said and done, the woman ended up buying the van for $15,000. It was, in my opinion, in much better shape, of course, with the new coat of paint, all the seals and dry rot inside fixed. I even went as far to also replace the speaker system inside, so it had some really nice new speakers that were Bluetooth connectable. You didn't need to run a wire or any sort of cable. You could just hop in and connect right to the Bluetooth speakers, which I always personally enjoy rather than having to plug and find a cord to jack yourself in. The only thing in the van that I think could have probably gotten an additional facelift or more TLC would have been the bathroom. I wasn't quite sure how to remodel that without dropping a good amount of money and wasn't sure if it would be too worth it at the end of the day. So I'm very happy with how it turned out. I think the exterior with all the LED lights looks a whole lot better at night. Put a new battery on the sides so that you can of course run appliances and have a little bit of offshore power. Generator is still a work in progress and the interior got a complete facelift with the carpet being removed, a lot of the cabinets being replaced, a new coat of paint, fixing all the dry rot, the seals around the window, reupholstering that couch, and just leaving a much better, more welcoming and bright environment for people who would be enjoying this van on many road trips to come. And I appreciate you guys following along. If you wouldn't mind dropping a comment, leaving a like, and subscribing, it always helps out the channel. It doesn't cost anything to do. 
I'm going to be doing another series coming up soon where I'm actually going to be talking with and doing some interviews with a lot of the local homeless population around Northern California since I actually work around them on a daily basis both in Sacramento and San Francisco, California and I always find it personally really interesting to hear their stories and understand if there's a way that we can help them since truthfully that's one of my biggest passions is getting people off the streets and back on their feet. Hope you all have a great rest of your day, night, evening, week, month, year, and I will see you on the next one.